All right, and we're back. This is video number four. If this is not the fourth video you are watching of me, you're out of order. All right, video number four. Okay, so now it's time for the math. All right, so we have a buffer that is made by adding three moles of, if you don't recognize that, that is acetic acid, and 0.3 moles of sodium acetate to enough water to make one liter of a solution. The pH of this buffer is 4.74. But think about that part of the question. They are giving you another piece of information besides just pH. What did we just talk about in our last video? The best buffers are the ones in which the concentrations of the acid and the base are the same because the log of one is zero, which means that pH is, wait for it, pKa. All right, pH is pKa. So, you know, two pieces of information right there, boom, off the bat. Okay, looking at the first part, so, so this is our buffer, 4.74, and we know that that's also the pKa, 4.74. Now it says calculate the pH of this solution after 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide is added okay all right so let's go to our handy dandy piece of paper so ph is equal to pka plus the log of base over acid well we are determining ph right that's what we're trying to figure out is we're trying to figure out what is the ph going to be after we add this extremely small amount of a strong base. Remember, I told you, we're not adding massive amounts. If you add a massive amount of a strong acid to something, you're going to kill it. You're going to kill the buffer. If you add a strong amount of strong base to it, you're going to kill the buffer, okay? So these are small amounts. All right. So pH, that's what we're looking for, is equal to pKa. When we know the pKa, that's 4.74, right? Based off our buffer because pH was equal to pKa. So really, all we got to figure out here is what's this guy and what's this guy? And to do this, we have to think about the equation that is taking place here. All right, so let's sketch it out. So we have some sort of a weak acid is dissociating into protons and anions. The initial sort of, we can kind of do an ice table for this, and I'll show you how. So the initial is this is the original buffer. Okay, so I is the original buffer. And the original buffer contains 0.3 moles of acid, and it contains 0.3 moles of base. Okay. Sorry about that scream fit. Um, I have two cats, and they are not fans of each other, so I'm very sorry if you heard that scream fit. Moving on. All right, we're adding 0.02 moles of sodium hydroxide, okay? What in this equation is this gonna react with? It's not gonna react with the base because a base doesn't react with a base. It's gonna react with an acid, okay? And how it's gonna react with an acid is it's gonna reduce the acid, right? By how much? By however much it says, 0.02 moles, okay? So this is, so the change then, this is going to be minus 0.02. And this, again, is the concentration of the strong base added, okay? But if the acid's going to go down by this amount, then the conjugate base has to go up by the exact same amount, right? Law of conservation of mass, okay? So then 0.3 minus 0.02 would be the equilibrium, which is going to be after the base is added, okay, is going to be 0 0.280. And then the conjugate base will be what? We're adding it, right? So it's 0 0.320, okay? So then we're gonna put that up here. So the base, is 0 0.320, the acid is 0 0.280, and at this point we just need to put it in our calculator, but before we do, 
ask yourself this question. What should this number essentially come out to be close to? It has to be close to this. If it is nothing close to 4.74, we have made a very large error. Okay? All right. So, calculator. 4.74 plus the log of 0.32 divided by 0.28. And we get 4.80. Which is exactly what the slide says we should have gotten. Did the pH change much? No. What does this mean? Well, it means that the buffer did its job. It was able to do its job because we didn't ask it to do very much. Okay? For comparison, what would happen if you just had that much of a concentration of base in water? So what if it was just... 0.02 molar sodium hydroxide. What would the pH of that be? Right? So the pH of that, so, well, first of all, sodium hydroxide is a base, so we would calculate pOH first, right? And that's equal to the negative log of hydroxide. So the negative log of 0.02 which comes out to be 1.70, okay? But that's pOH, and then how do we figure out pH? Right, yeah, exactly. So pH is 14 minus pOH. So 14 minus 1.70, so it would be 12.30, okay? So look at the difference there. Did the buffer make a difference? Absolutely, because otherwise the pH would have been 12. But it's not. The pH is still less than 5. Why? Because it was added to a buffer, not just pure water. Okay? There's another question here, which is basically the exact same thing. But in this case, we're talking about adding acid instead of a base. It's a strong acid, and it's the exact same amount. So that means our equation is essentially the same thing, except for this is going to flip, right? So for the acid, it's going to be pH equals 4.74 plus the log of 0.280 divided by 0.320, and we should get a pH of 4.68. Notice the difference between the numbers 0.6 and 0.6 is exactly the same. The acid makes it, adding the acid to the buffer makes it a little bit more acidic by 0.06. Adding the base to the buffer makes it a little bit more basic by 0.06. All right, so this is the end of this video. There will be one more video and then I swear I'm done. All right, See you in video number five.